welcome back. My name is Triss and this is Double O'Neill. This is me making my model railway uh, bit by bit each episode and you get to share my hobby and I get to share it with you and it's really good fun for me because I get to enjoy the community and all the wonderful comments that I get back from you giving me great information. Anyway, I'll be back right in a second. We're gonna have a bit of fun watching a couple of different clips of what's up and coming or coming up. What's coming up? Hey, let's see that. Hope you enjoyed that. For me, uh, I've had a really good kind of week and a half uh, working on ideas. When I was away, I went away to see my girlfriend in Poland and I saw the most wonderful uh, railway museum and I didn't expect it to be this good. It was really, really good. But we're gonna go into that in a minute. What have I done this week? Um, it's something that I've been wanting to do for ages and I created this signal box. I just cover my hand behind here. You'll get to see a bit more. This is for the narrow gauge railway. And I've been drawing it for a little while. It took a bit of time because on the roof we have all the tiles, we have the brickwork and I didn't have to draw each brick, but you have to draw each brick. So you do like patterns and things to create it. But it's not always straightforward. You make a small mistakes and some of us are perfectionists and I'm not a perfectionist to a certain degree because you'll see some of the work that I do, I kind of get it done to a certain point. But sometimes when you're drawing something up and you know you can do a better job if you just take a few more minutes and when it's on the computer, it's you're just adding information to, to a screen of what you know what you want. Anyway, so I did that. I knew I'm gonna hate one part of it, which was painting it, painting the bricks. I always um, struggle with the brickwork but on this one I think I did a better job this time um, you'll see some close-ups of it really really soon um, hopefully whilst I'm talking because obviously I'm gonna edit this after I've done this but it's always hard to show these bits up um, during me just showing it there but that was great that's going on the 009 layout he hasn't got many points to be dealing with but it looks cool. Um, the first part of it, like when I started making it, I've got a roof over here somewhere. I put it down, I can't find it. The first one I had didn't go to plan. Maybe I threw it away. I think I threw it away. I thought I had it right in front of me. I'm still looking. Um, and what I find is when I print with the resin printer, I get the issue where um, it's always a bit oversized and other bits are undersized. So that when you want to put it together, it doesn't fit. So I ended up having to make this bit quite a lot bigger. And I actually used the slicer software and just made it a percent bigger, just 1%. And it was enough that it actually then fitted together really, really nicely. So that was that. Um, but what I will do now is we'll watch a little video of me painting it. I'll just kind of go through all the bits. I know a lot of you are getting into the hobby some of you been doing it for a while and there's a lot of experts out there as well that are really good at this so hopefully you'll take a bit from it i can put a few notes up there might even talk a little bit whilst it's going on but enjoy that and we'll be back to look at some really really good stuff um, i'm really looking forward to showing you what else i have been up to see you in a sec so this is the anycubic photon it's a resin 3d printer sla type and all I need to do is get this off the tray, get it into the isopropyl alcohol, give it a clean off with a brush, and then once that's done, I will be um, chopping off all the little legs. Um, actually, after I normally uh, clean it off with this, I clean it with water as well, um, just to get rid of any isopropyl alcohol. Um, yeah, clip off all the little legs. Have lots of fun with that. Off it comes, and then I throw it in the um, I call it the uh, UV bath, I guess we could call it, which cures it fully and makes it nice. I leave it in there. Can I do like half an hour um, and see how it goes? And then after that, give it a primer and then it's paint. It's a pretty pr simple process as you've seen it all before. Um, I will just go through all of it as I always do. 
So this will be the hardest bit that I always hate doing the most. Um, it's the brickwork. And I mean, hate's probably too strong a word, but I, I find I struggle with it and I'm always worried that it won't look very good. And to be honest, the more I do it, I'm sure the better that I will get. So really it's a case of getting some kind of browns and reds together and stuff like that. And I'll kind of work out a brickish color. And actually from where I paint from, I've got houses out the window and I kind of have a look at those bricks and see if I can match it. So I've got like a light red here, um, which is a kind of a, a bloodish red, a bit, a bit light for the blood color. Um, and then I've got a darker red, like a burnt red uh, to sit on that. Um, and then I've got a brown, uh, which is for my burnt amber. Give it a mix together and kind of work out, <clears throat> is this good enough? I always think it's too dark. I think this is too dark, but when I've gone lighter, it's too light. But I'm sure there'll come a point that I figure it all out. Putting layers on, nice and simple. Not too thick, because uh, I want to keep the detail of the brickwork from the 3D print. Um, but, you know, just get a good coat on there, because eventually we're going to put a wash on there work my way around and just do what I need to. Um, I haven't done the normal thing and showed you whilst I do the 3D printing the the place of um, when we're on the slicer putting it on there or even the drawing because I don't know I feel like I keep repeating the system but if you like it let me know in the comments if you're happy with how I normally uh, kind of share my information. Um, I don't want to <laughs> you know, not get you bored, but I kind of like the painting parts. I always enjoy watching other people paint, so I always think whatever I enjoy watching, maybe other people enjoy watching that when I share my story and my hobby as I do this. So we're doing the sides, it's getting in there nicely. I'll let it dry properly after this, but we get our back piece done, which is actually you're going to see that more when you look at the layout, because you're not going to see the fantastic front with all the windows as such on this, because um, it'll be facing the, the railway. Once that was done, I actually just painted the inside of the lower level of the room um, in, in the colour, just because I thought that will just give it a, a look. You're not really going to see inside it very much. Um, you know, maybe I'll put lights in there in the future, but really I need to then add the the detail that you'd have inside a signal box, and I don't have any of that stuff, and maybe I could do that sometime, but maybe that's a you know, episode 130 <laughs> when I do stuff like that. Um, I'm getting into the hobby, I'm enjoying creating buildings, doing scenery, um, and just making lots of bits. Yeah, here I just painted a brown floor, I mixed a little bit of red with it, and, and that's it, so it's darkened that off. And with that done, I just need to finish off the inside. And this isn't the only coat that I did, I did kind of three or four coats uh, of the lighter colour with painting over the top of the primer paint's quite thin, it takes some time before it becomes a bit of a block colour. So I kind of painted that in there and that was it. So I'll just show you me doing one coat. Um, but I was pretty happy, it just kind of makes me feel like I finished it off because I painted the, all the surfaces that you're going to see. Um, can I thought I'd slap that on and then I can forget about the inside and then focus on doing all the outside work. Because now, we need to look at doing the mortar. So I mixed some grey and beige together, added some mortar, gave it a nice mix around. I actually add a little bit more paint after this, I don't show it on the video, but I add a little bit more grey. Um, so then I've got a nice watery wash that I can drop on top of the bricks. I've been playing with it a few times now and adding lots and lots of water seems to be good, whereas before I was trying to smear off the too thick of uh, paint. So I'll just paint it off and I'll just let, let it just kind of dry, but don't repaint paint over it. Once you do this, the water kind of starts evaporating, it leaves the paint and so what I found was I start touching it again and I'm messing it all up so it looks a bit messy at the moment but if you don't like it and you're doing it this way just add more water and you can always start again, add more water, blotch it off with tissue, have another go, like what's the worst that can happen? So you see on the back it's just all the same stuff, it's nice and easy and once this is dried we're gonna work at adding a bit more, yeah, so you see here, I used a bit too much, but it worked out alright, just blotching it with the tissue, yeah, it was it was okay, I guess you can see here, it's it's settling in there, and it's shiny from, from the water still being on it, and all I'll do now is I'll let that dry, so what's the next step, well, it's a case of uh, putting a slightly light, lighter brick on it, and so I'm going to kind of try and dry brush, um, drying off the brush as much as I can on the 
um, tissue and I'll just dust over the top of the bricks trying not to get down the cracks and crevices add a little bit of pink with this one to brighten it up and I'll just work it making it so you can see the brickwork a bit more when you look at houses you don't see the individual bricks as much as you think you do there's a whole blend of colors and that's something that I need to learn a bit more on and maybe start introducing the other colors but at the moment I don't have the masses of confidence going to ruin it maybe I should just print myself loads of brickwork and then have another go but this is the simple stuff now um, I'm just gonna paint the paving slabs um, that work their way up to the door um, in just nice and simple all I'll be doing later on is um, adding some uh, shading and stuff for like that to give a bit more look. But now I need to do the roof. So I've added a little bit more black and purely a case of laying it on. I'm doing, I think I did actually one solid coat on this. It went on really, really well. I didn't thin it down too much. I always add a little bit of water. This is all acrylics um, and just done the ends. And so I was happy because what I want to do later is come in with a basically a black wash. And then I'll add in some of the lighter colours later on. What you'll see is I forgot to do the chimney on this one. So I'm going to be painting that separately. But after this, you can see I'm doing the windows now. And what I normally do is do the windows last. And they're really hard because you've got to watch out for getting the whites and all the edges. So now you can kind of, we won't say slop it on. But you can go in with a little bit less care for where you know you're running over. Um, and just get all the surfaces done and again this is with the white paint it's watered down I've said so many times and I'll probably say it again in a minute um, I want to get some enamels of that and I've actually ordered some since making this video so um, nice watered down black wash just adding lots and lots of water until I get what I want and actually this is still too thick so you could just dip your brush back in the water and run that back over and that will actually make it you know runnier it'll make it less thick so then you can actually show up let's say the shading that be arising in that so with that done i just leave it to dry now we're going to do some enamel work i enjoy using the enamels there's something nice about painting with them i feel like i can trust them but they take longer to dry and you just need to take your time with them um it's not quite like acrylic where you can just wash it off with water quickly i can add um thinners to it but I find everything just start, starts getting messy so work the brush through pick all the different areas I just do the door first I thought then obviously the surrounding wood around the windows paying care not to get the white bits <laughs> it's always tricky so that comes around and so you know we get all these surfaces and I'll probably end up doing I think three layers I did of this I always thin it down with thinners just so I don't lose all the detail of the wood it's obviously there's nothing wrong with doing three thin layers you can I think get more detail than if you did it one thick layer um, it just kind of sits on top of cracks so now I'm adding in kind of the the lighter colors into the brickwork so they're top of the chimney and picking out edges of the stones and I mix different amounts of orange with the red that I'd created before and just touch into corners and just start giving it a bit of highlight but I reckon you could spend hours on the brickwork but I still haven't found an amazing video like on YouTube when I have a hunt to really do great brickwork but I need to just keep hunting maybe I've come across one and didn't pay enough attention because I wasn't going to do it but if any of you you know know of any good videos just drop me a link in the comments that'd be interesting to see so you can see that I've done some highlight work on first of all the chimney stack as well as the 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 slate tiles I guess that are on the roof I just got a grey um, and just dusted the edges and everything with it um, bit of a dry brush running it on um, and now I'm just going to run the dark stone I use light stone to do all the woodwork and on the edging of the woodwork around the door and stuff like that it will just have the dark stone and I really like it um, even though I've got more and more modern things running on my layouts I'm st still really enjoying the Great Western Railway and if you've been to Seven Valley Railway you'll see how nice it looks in, in real life and you'll see that um, like diesel's running with it all that kind of stuff it doesn't feel out of place you've, you've got a heritage line basically and that's what my railway is it's a fictional route um, which goes to nowhere elsewhere and whatever other names I come up with for it I've got a few in the bag that I'm gonna <laughs> come up with at some point um, but this is the um, signal box for nowhere up on the um, 
009 layout, which is the narrow gauge layout. That's why it's quite a small signal box, but to be honest, you know, you could probably have it on a double O line if you wanted to on looking after a couple of little areas, I guess. Um, but no, really, really pleased with actually how it's looking. Just doing the little door handle now. I painted it black and then just kind of highlighting a couple of areas with um, grey just to give it a look. And now you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out some of the tiles just to show that, yes, it has tiles. So I'll just pick out tile by tile, see how it looks. And yeah, just give it kind of a bit more of a and a highlighted look. So you can see I've picked the, the corner and I'm just working my way through just adding the bits of detail and, and I'm sure it's not perfect. I'm sure there's better ways of doing this but this is how I did it. <laughs> it seemed to be alright for me. So uh, you just got to have a go at these things because sometimes we would just want to paint things block colours but then we're looking at it thinking it'd be nice to have it more detailed and a steady hand and a little bit of time picking out certain areas because suddenly give something a bit more I guess depth and more detail. And that's what we like with these models when you see lots of detail um, from the new models to some of the older ones there's a vast difference but with the paintbrush you can suddenly start picking out some details here and there and make it look nice so yeah and again on this I could have spent longer but I thought I'd just pick out a few areas and I can always get the paintbrush on it another time but once I did this all I did was I put some matte varnish on it just to seal it all off and that's that really you can see it looks all right and I'll just drop it onto where it will be roughly on the layout. This is the 009 board. And it will be sitting there. And what it means is around that area I can start adding some other things. And oh, I can't wait to put some greenery on it. And I'm, I'm getting close to adding some greenery. But <laughs> we'll get there at some stage I'm sure. Anyway, back to me in my room. And we're back. Hopefully you enjoyed that. You kind of took away something from it. If I was to do it again, I think I said about this before, I need to get some more paint. I want to get some enamels um, in white. I need to go get some humble white. Just because I find white as an acrylic never paints very nicely and I'm wondering if in enamels it would be better. The other bits like the brickwork, I paint that with um, the acrylics and that's fine for me. Really, really enjoy it. But that is what it is. Anyway, it went together pretty nicely and seeing it now on the layout, it, it looks pretty cool. And I'm getting to the point that with the 009 layout, I can start putting maybe some greenery on there, which I almost did for this episode. I just looked at it and thought, that's just missing that. It's calling out for a bit of uh, grass and some bushes and things like that, but we'll be doing it soon enough. Anyway, what else have you seen? I've got my Double O'Neill t-shirt on here, slightly too large for me, I got an XL, I should have got a large but fine, I'll probably grow into it at some point if I uh, start enjoying certain foods. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's quite cool, well it's really cool, not quite cool. I've got the mallard on the shoulder that you can see there, obviously there's my logo there, RDT, um, that's my friend uh, Rich that does these for me, it does a great, great job and he got these sent over uh, during lockdown. but. He didn't quite get them in the post in time, um, but it's great. I've got them now. Um, I'm going to probably get some polo shirts done for myself. Maybe go for a bit of a smaller logo next time. But it's kind of cool. So when I do my videos with you guys, it's kind of representing the channel, which is really, really great. He also does stickers, which you'll see on this body here. You'll see all these red, white and blue stickers. This is my RC car that I go racing with, which is one of my other hobbies. Um, well, it's, it's my job. <laughs> Um, not to race them, but to develop them. But if you got bored or you really wanted to check things out and you're maybe into RC cars, check out Trish Bits on YouTube. That's my other channel. Haven't done a lot in there recently. It's more of like a reference channel to help you with your cars if you're into racing. But anyway, this is a model railway channel, so we won't go on about that. The other bit that I've been doing is going on eBay and purchasing some items. I haven't opened this up. What I thought I'd do is we'll open this up. After we've done that, We'll try it on the ray up well, on the track here. What I really want to do is make actually like a test track with some grass on. It'd be more complete than my railway upstairs. Um, get that working, and then we'll run it on the railway after we've been to the Polish um, railway museum. So let's open this up, see what it looks like. It's been well packaged. Let's open that up. 
try not to uh, damage the engine itself. <laughs> You're probably already guessing what it is. It's a rally engine, that's one thing. Found on eBay. It's called Revenge. Okay, it's a class 50. And it's got some some work that needs doing to it. It's got like a missing buffer and stuff like that. And I thought that's something I could get sorted out. It's from the Lima range, um, one of the Italian um, engines that were made. And I just fancied it. It's really nice. And as I'm getting into my diesels, I don't want to go and spend a fortune on them and then decide that oh, I didn't really want to do that. Whereas with the steam engines, I've always got my heart in it. But I thought with the Lima, I could put some smaller couplings on and just, just build it up and treat it like a project. But just needs a bit of a clean up. I have no idea if it runs. The wheels look very dirty, actually. They're probably going to need a clean up, so I highly doubt it's going to run out of the box. Um, but that's something that I can do for another day. Or I could do it um, ready for well, before I go up into the loft. I'll put some footage on soon um, and you'll get to watch that going around and I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. But we'll see if there's a promising start by putting it on the track now. Oh, it moves. That is promising. If it does that, once we clean the wheels, it should be really good. It works. That's good, right? I was thinking, oh, it's not going to work, and I promised them, like, me running it upstairs. So, it's fine. I'm happy it works. We'll just do it one more time just to see. I didn't have to encourage it there. Oh, come on. You can do it. Spoke too soon, didn't I? nice it's cool it works you know reasonably heavy um, but yeah it's called revenge it's a class 50 i've started falling in love with these like these diesel electrics diesel electric yeah that's what it is right or is it diesel hydraulic i don't know you tell me in the comments you tell me what these things are um but really really pleased and i can't wait to, to get some more i've got some plans on some different locos that i want to get um but yeah I will leave that there. I'm gonna give it a good clean up whilst you guys are going over to Poland where I was with my girlfriend. She took me over to Sohachev, which is a narrow gauge railway and that's in the area that it is. Um, and it's a museum and it opened in 1986. I'm looking down because I made some notes. It opened in 1986 and it's a section of the Warsaw Railway Museum. And I've been there before and actually I've taken some footage and actually had a corrupt laptop um, hard drive go on me so I lost all that work so I'll go over there sometime but at this museum it was fantastic I didn't manage to go on the train ride they offer a 18 kilometre um, route um, through some really really nice countryside and I didn't get to do that but um, there was an option to do it but I thought it's okay we'll leave it um, we went to see uh, Chopin's Chopin, 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 the, the, the pianist, and um, we got to see his home on the way there, and then we went over to the museum afterwards, and that was really, really good, really enjoyed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the footage now of the, um, the bits, that the clips that I got that I really enjoyed. I'll just leave that running with some music, as I always will, and you can enjoy that. I, I loved it. They had loads of 080 narrow gauge engines. Um, it was brilliant. And inside the building um, that was part of the museum they had a model a running model you could pay some money in the slot and the model would go around and it represented what it was like i think in the 70s and it was brilliant a really brilliant model so i've recorded that so enjoy that i have that running we'll have the engines going around well, not engines going around but me walking around with the engines it's like i think they said like 150 pieces of let's say you are not rolling stock but you've got engines and you've got um coaches and wagons and, and various things there and it's a really cool um bits like there was a car with these massive wheels on that you could run on the track so have a little watch i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you back after then
Okay, so I've cleaned up the engine. It should be good. It had very, very dirty wheels. And I think that we could probably do of getting it some more traction tyres. But what we'll do is we'll pop up into the loft now and we'll give it a run round. But actually, before we do that, we need to give it something to pull. And in this box, I have some more things. I almost forgot about this. I would have finished the video, but oh, I didn't tell them. And I didn't spend a lot of money. I was on eBay and there was like, you got the buy it now or place a bid or make an offer. So I made an offer and I went in to the point of that it was like 10 pound a coach or I think it was less. Yeah, it might have been about 10 pound a coach. I don't know, I'd have to check. Does it matter anyway? I didn't pay more than ten pound a coach. Uh, I've got some. I believe they're Hornby. Oh, it is out. Uh, making a mess. Should we get them out? Oh, there's a bit hanging off. Okay. Well, that's a good start. I'll pop that one back on. So this is an intercity coach. It's actually very dirty. Um, I thought it would be good to have that going around. So there's one. I'll probably give those wheels a clean as well before we go up. There's two. It's okay. It's a bit. Not battered as such, but it, it needs love. Um, but it didn't cost me much at all. Um, I think this lot, pay, I paid 30 pounds, and I got, oh, that one's all a bit, yeah, that one's all right, one, that one looks a lot different, that one. It's a guard, distributed weight in eight tons. Okay, I'll learn about these things. This is a Lima one. Sorry, I was wrong, it wasn't a Hornby. Lima, Lima, or oh, Lima. That goes with the engine. I did. I, I got some other ones as well. And that was there uh, was a Hornby. And he's got some metal wheels on these. There's another Lima one. So I thought what we could do is we could get it to pull them. But they're two different styles, so I guess we'll have to choose. I also got another box. And if we're thinking more, because I bid on two separate ones, thinking they're not going to go for this price. I've gone way under the ball on this one. Let's open it up if I can figure out. It's like an intelligence test, isn't it? Which I'm failing. Ah, let's open it from here. So I get boxes with these. Ah, so I've got a buffet car one here. Ah. Oh. Dusty. Oh, these look, these look a bit nicer than the Lima ones. So this is a Hornby one. It's got like silver, like chrome windows on it. Like a proper bit of bling now. I wonder if it was like that in real life. Okay. That's more in the style of these Lima ones. So they've got more of a similar thing, but these have got the, the bling bling windows. Um, so we'll see what's the real thing. And then I've got these. Hopefully someone can tell me the difference between all of these. And I got this is pretty good condition actually this one this Hornby one again very very shiny silver windows was that was that how it was they had really chromish windows and that's more in the style of this Lima one so that's got the ends rounded so hopefully some of you can tell me what the differences are between them and then I've got one here where they've really gone to town on the wrapping let's open them up I'm sure on the listing it was quite hard to see how good quality, how good a quality, how good the quality was of the three coaches that of the Hornby ones. Whereas the other ones, it was better quality and they looked right in it. So these ones are much better than I thought that they would look. Ah, so these have got silver windows, but they're not so shiny. Again, it's a it's a Hornby one made in Britain, um, and yeah, that's it says guard on there. Um, so I think what I would do is I'll probably get my other diesel going around and we can watch both of them and they can share the two different styles. So one style's got rounded on the end and the other one's got that. So is that the different marks and stuff like that? Could someone let me know in the comments what the different types of coaches are? So I've got the rounded ends. I'm assuming that's newer. It looks a bit more modern. More like what's on like what I see now kind of thing. Whereas that's more like the... Is it the 1960s, 1970s, kind of the older fa like fashion ones? But you know, let me know. Anyway, big thanks to my Patreons. Your names will be coming up here. Um, it's brilliant what you've been doing. And 
yeah, can't wait to keep bringing you all this wonderful stuff that I'm doing. Well, I think it's wonderful. I enjoy it, and so I keep doing it. So it's wonderful to me. Anyway, let's go up into the loft. Let's have some fun. And after that, well, I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. You can tell